now we'll do a brief recap of what we saw the other time so that we can link uh, both lectures together. Now, we, we stopped at the Geruma, that is the, the truly self-mastered or the righteous uh, uh, self-mastered person. That is someone who has been able to integrate his personality with uh, a mat, that is the matic person. Now, in this very second part of the lecture, the teachability of humans will be uh, talking about two distinct topics that are correlated. That is the tension between nature and nurture and the ignorance and moral failure. Now, in this, in this very lecture, we'll be looking uh, clearly at the, 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 the first part, and that is the part A, like you see here, is the nature versus nurture debate. What is it about? Sometimes we refer to nature as a, a, a sort of pre-wiring that is uh, influenced by genetic inheritance and uh, other biological factors. For instance, a classical example is a 12-year-old boy that is uh, prone to tantrums. We say that by his nature, this kid uh, throws tantrums. So naturally, he is like that. Now, when you talk about nurture, we will talk about the influence of external factors after birth. And these factors could be exposure to environment uh, or other emotional stimuli, uh, experience, and also learning. A classical example, always with a boy, it's on the issue of parents that scream at their son a lot. So the way they scream becomes by screaming at the child, they nurture him in that way. That is, uh, they, 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 gradually the, the child grows up and uh, screams also back at the and his own uh, children in the future. So that is to say in a nutshell that the nature and nurture debate is concerned with the contribution that both influences make on humans. And that is how they influence uh, human behavior. Now, on this very day, we will be looking at this uh, in a very uh, classical way. Now, development of the concepts. Now, this is, uh, as we can see now on the, sh on the screen, is one of the uh, debates, strong debates, in the, and they seen as one of the most instructive discourse in chemetic literature on the teachability of the human person, because it exposes uh, the dialogue between uh, the scribe, Annie, and his son, Hosun Hotep. And this is found in a book we call the, the Book of Annie, chapter, nine, verse 13 uh, to 10, and uh, also uh, page 17. Now, the importance of this text cannot be overemphasized because it is the only text actually that we have from available literature in which uh, appears in a very synthetic way, a dialogue of challenge to the fundamental ancient Egyptian beliefs, such as this, because we said earlier, human beings can be taught. Now, the scribe that is writing, that is uh, Ani, is writing to his son. And the son now is challenging the father, saying that it's not possible. Humans cannot be taught. Uh, then by, by raising uh, some objections. Now, in response to his father's teachings, uh, Hussein Hotep raises certain questions uh, which tend to challenge the concept of the general teachability of the human person. First and foremost, he begins by suggesting that the moral teachings of his father were better suited for the learned than for him, in that carrying out the instructions requires a certain level of knowledge he obviously feels he lacks. That is to say, if he were to follow the teachings of his dad, he necessarily needs to have lived or acquired certain knowledge in the past. And he feels like he doesn't have those kind of skills, that there are things he lacks, which inhibits him naturally from uh, hearkening, listening and carrying out the teachings of his uh, dad. And that is why he made the affirmation, I wish I were like you, father, as learned as you, then I would carry out your teachings. Since I'm not like you, therefore each man is led by his own nature. <laughs> I am not like you, so I'm different. 
it means you can't teach me certain things since I'm different from you. And this is the challenge he threw to his uh, that Now, we want to know who is going to win this race. Is it the nature or the nurture? Now, we now, from this, from this affirmation, we have uh, an implication. And the implication is this. For if one is led, and in this case, as we've just uh, exposed, uh, and the person is uh, limited by his or her nature, then of what value is instruction? If, for instance, uh, by my nature, I can't learn certain things, I can be a, a, a matic person, I can be upright, I can be virtuous, then why would you instruct me? You know, And uh, this uh, is a big problem. That's why uh, the dad, always Ani, gives him what we call the pedagogical response. And this pedagogical response goes thus. To Hosun Hotep's concern that one is simply led by his nature, and he gives the analogy of the fighting bull. You know, uh, if you are very familiar with, if you even go on YouTube or Facebook, you will see the, the Mexicans and other parts of uh, South America, they always put bulls in the ring. Sometimes they use them for fighting or other times just for entertainment. So he uses an analogy of the bull, the lion, the horse, the dog, the monkey, and the goose. Uh, who subdue uh, or transform their nature, a, a little bit of it, and uh, obey their teacher. Now, we are talking of those that they, they use in this, their amusement. So they're saying, if these animals could be tamed, despite them being savage, that is, beastic in their nature, then it follows that human beings, no matter what they are, their feelings, are, that they can be taught. Now, Ani himself uh, is arguing that if a wild beast or foul can be cultivated by instructions, you know? So can a human who is uh, ostensibly, is a possessor of heart and mind and imitates God in his knowing. So by our nature, we are imitators of God like we had in the previous uh, lecture. So human beings by their very nature, they have hearts and mind and they are superior to animals. If animals can be taught, if animals can be tamed, if animals can be uh, domesticated, then it follows that human beings as superior animals can as well uh, be taught. Now, he, he made uh, further uh, discourse by saying that uh, a carpenter, for instance, uh, who takes a crooked stick in the field and makes it into a dignitary staff and takes a stress stick as well and makes it into a horse's collar. You know, that a, a carpenter uh, can take a simple stick and transform it into something uh, marvelous. That that is how a teacher is capable also of uh, transforming a pupil. Now, the student, that is the uh, Hosun Hotep, uh, now looks at the dad and says and recognizes the value of the teachings that he had received. Now we are talking about the teachability of the humans. That is the previous lecture. And is now ready to be nurtured or cultivated by the teacher, who is also his start. So this is a sort of passage. You know, we are on the con we are concluding the lecture, the previous lecture we had uh, last two weeks. Now, the part B of our lecture now diverges, it, and it focuses uh, on the ignorance and moral failure. Now, so many uh, persons, especially in the extracts, are. Uh, uh, penitential hymns and prayers that uh, are found in the ancient days uh, are consistent on the claim that uh, one's offenses are essentially a problem of ignorance. That is to say that people uh, misbehave, people do wrong uh, out of ignorance, you know? So if you meet someone that uh, is consistent in doing wrong, it's basically because it's ignorant. This is how the ancients, they have always uh, classified it. That is to say that uh, a moral failure, if my moral failure is as a result of ignorance, you know, and uh, I, as a man, I do not, uh, I am not capable of distinguishing from good and uh, from evil. Now, we, we found this, like I was saying, from the ancient texts. And in this text, uh, Nefa Rabu is saying, I was an ignorant and mindless man who knew not good or evil. This was a kind of supplication to the God saying, uh, forgive me 
for it was out of ignorance that I've seen. And uh, going back to what we've been saying, uh, that is to say that moral failure is as a result of ignorance of oneself. We've seen uh, in, the, in our previous lecture, and actually it's going to be a concluding, uh, let's say something we'll add later as a concluding part, that uh, in the ancient uh, a Kemite society, there is the inscription, man, know thyself, which is ascribed actually now to the Greeks, uh, but it originated actually from the ancient Kemite society. What does it mean to know oneself, to be in touch with your nature, with who you are? And if you're not in touch with your, yourself, then you are ignorant. And as a result of that ignorance, you, you cannot distinguish between good or evil. You know, it's not that you cannot be taught, but you, uh, you, out of laziness or negligence, one chooses not to know. But if one hearkens you know, to the teachings, of the guru, of the, 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 the master, then one by, by extension can become righteous, can become virtuous. That is to say that in a context of uh, ignorance, instinct becomes a substitute for, for knowledge. And we know that animals react by instinct. Mm -hmm. Animals, we, we, we say that they don't reason because reason, uh, belongs exclusively to, to human beings. Uh, so if a man refuses to, to learn, he acts by instinct. And that is, uh, he, he goes against his uh, nature. Now, in this context, it's important to, to note that uh, we are talking of uh, one who is unmindful, you know, forgetful and uh, disregardful, uh, and thus in this case, unattentive, to the right and good. Someone that doesn't care, he knows sense. And even when he listens, he forgets. And even when he sees things, he disregards the instructions. And uh, that is the kind of person you are seeing that is ignorant. Now, in this case, uh, as, as a way of instructing the, the disciple, the, the, the noun gave this kind of uh, clear uh, indication that if you are wealthy and strength has come to you and your God has built you up, do not pretend to be ignorant of people whom you know. Greet everyone. Release another when you find him bound. Give support to the afflicted. Good is spoken of the one who does not play the ignorant one. This is an extract from uh, the book known as uh, Garden. Now, a little, let's go back a little bit. That's in order to interpret this text, that if you're wealthy and, and uh, have strength and you're, you're strong and God has built you up because the ancient Egyptians, they, they are very much... Um, attuned to the fact that uh, humans are not separated from gods. Actually, we are called to become gods. So if that is the case, and uh, we, we know that we, we don't have a, a power of our own. Man does not act all alone. It's not just, it's not a, a single entity thrown into this world, but it's part of uh, a reality that uh, surpasses, that transcends him. This is the right word, that transcends his being. So he's saying that if this being, supreme being, has lifted you up, then do not pretend to be ignorant of people whom you know. That is to say, to have that eyes, the listening heart, to recognize those who are around you, those who need your help, and to greet everyone. Greeting everyone, now you see, if there is, is using an uh, all-inclusive term. When you greet everyone, it's not saying you greet some people and you leave other people. That means you reach out to all the creation, all, all, all uh, men and women. And another one is, this takes you into another uh, dimension, which is the one of setting captives free. Release another when you find him bound. Releasing those who are in captivity. 
Now, this could be mental uh, enslavement, could also be moral, could also be physical. That means fighting always for the good of others. That your mission as someone who is instructed, as someone who wants to create a magic society, a society of orderliness, is to unbound that which is bound, unchain that which is chained, liberate that which is imprisoned. You are a liberator. That is someone who is knowledgeable. An ignorant person will ignore this uh, general instruction, but someone who wants to actually find himself, who admits that uh, he, his, uh, his purpose here on this earth uh, has meaning, that he has a mission, will take this general instruction as a motto, as something to, to hold on to. And this is why they say that good is spoken of the one who does not play the ignorant one. The Igbos, they have a classical saying that good men is better than riches. Now, this word here, good is spoken of the one who does not play the ignorant one, reinforces the fact that goodness transcends generations. Good men goes beyond uh, territories. Because that is what we'll be remembered for when we are no more. And uh, we also, and this brings us immediately to, to the idea of the, the, the ancestors. You know, someone becomes an ancestor, not because he died old at uh, a ripe old age, no. Because the good name, the deeds, he was a magic person. He was and is, because we never actually go into extinction. Man continues to exist in the in the Egyptian um, uh, anthropology. All of these uh, forms of uh, ignorance, we are talking of lack of knowledge, uh, mindlessness, a lack of self-understanding, and also uh, lack of responsiveness, refers specifically to a cognitive and uh, moral deficiency, you know, which demands corrective response. This moral deficiency, it's, uh, let's say a decadence, someone who, who, who lacks uh, morality. And how will that person uh, bring up himself? We are, we is by uh, corrective instruction, by instructing uh, himself in the, in the right way. Now, uh, don't be surprised that we're already going to the summary part. That is because, like I said, uh, it, this is uh, the conclusion of what we had already begun uh, in, the, in the previous lectures on the teachability of the human person. If that is the case, the obvious solution, therefore, is uh, self-understanding. To understand oneself, to rediscover the purpose of your existence. Discipline oneself and correct oneself. This is uh, something that is unique to human beings. We said previously that animals uh, react by instinct. And someone who doesn't have knowledge automatically reacts to things. He doesn't reason. He looks at the society and he reacts. He keeps uh, reacting. He's, uh, instead of being proactive, uh, you know, he reacts to, to reality. That if we actually want to learn, then we have to, First and foremost, understand ourselves, understand the kind of nature that we have, who we are in the scheme of things. And then go into discipline. It's like an athlete, someone who is running. If you do not train yourself, you will never be able to, to, to reach uh, this uh, magic state. Now, does the problem here is not a question of a sinful nature. No, their interest is never on uh, sin. Uh, what we would call hamatia, uh, 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 missing the map, like you, are, you, you don't know where to, to, to go. You, you don't know the destination or, or, or lack of uh, self-restraint. It is rather a question of ignorance in its general and specific uh, forms. The lack of self-understanding and mindlessness. Someone seeing reality and uh, refuse to be mindful of what is surrounding him or her, you know? That this uh, post, this, uh, what we've mentioned so far, it, it becomes the fundamental sources of uh, moral failure. People fail when they do not know themselves, when they do not know themselves. That is to say that in this uh, context of the absence of rationality using one's brain, 
and moral sensitivity. Uh, moral sensitivity in this sense is always in, in regard to the other person, you know, the other person they are in front of me. Because uh, the society itself is built on uh, two pillars. Number one, professional uh, ability, your capability to do something. And then the, the ethical and moral dimension of what you do, that is how it influences on others. Your gift as a person and how those gifts influence on other persons. These are always the two poles of uh, human um, existence, how we interact in the society. Now, if you, uh, you, you lack the rational capability to exist in the society and also the moral sensitivity, you know, towards the other, not minding that your actions also can affect, can have positive or negative uh, aspects on others, then uh, one is definitely prone to fail. You know, and uh, if one finds himself, him or herself in this kind of situation, he has refused to recognize uh, himself and thus acts in contradiction to Marx. For you to be Marxic, you must know yourself. This is just it. This self-recognition in itself is one of is of one as a noble image of God. That is to say that we are gods. When you realize this, then you cannot but act in accordance to your nature. And a morally responsible and responsive person is uh, is what we are called to become. You know, uh, morally responsible. You are responsible of your acts. And you respond, a responsive person, you know, someone who, who responds to the needs of others. Uh, be, yeah, and this, you can achieve this even as a father, as a mother, as a sister, as a brother, as a leader, as a teacher, as king, queen, and citizen. What we are uh, proposing here uh, goes beyond your status in, in life. It goes, it talks about you uh, and uh, your, your role in this, uh, in this world. As, as being part of the, uh, let's say, the scheme of things. Now, like I said before, in the ancient Kemet, uh, where we now refer to as Egypt, uh, the phrase, know thyself, was engraved atop the entrance to every temple. You know, each temple had this. Because knowing yourself means uh, becoming who you really, who you are created to be. The image of God. This is our first lecture uh, heralded by uh, uh, Isaac, you know, the image of God. Now, uh, the conclusion is uh, the trust is to teach moral knowledge to all persons, to all persons. The moral knowledge is uh, an awakening, a call to, to discover oneself and to cultivate the capacity to distinguish right from wrong right from wrong and uh, this also when when we look at our context in nigeria this is not far-fetched in two weeks time we'll be going for voting <laughs> and we know the situation that nigeria is in now and sometimes we fail to to distinguish what is right from what is wrong sometimes you look at those who are supporting certain political candidates, uh, presidential aspirants, you ask yourself, does this person actually uh, wish the good of this nation? You know, allowing tribe, allowing religion, allowing sometimes in the global context, the skin color, even sometimes the, 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 the color of the eye to determine how we judge reality. Such a person is ignorant. We have the moral duty uh, to, to transform our reality, not just our lives. Like I said before, your action has a very strong influence on the scheme of things. It influences the life of the other. If that is the case, the context we are living in right now, today, this decisive moment in the history of our nation, how can we distinguish what is right from what is wrong? How can we distinguish the right presidential aspirant, the right person to vote for, from the wrong person to vote? Have we, as a nation, arrived at that, uh, at that uh, consciousness to say to ourselves, a thief is a thief. 
irrespective of his uh, uh, political or ethnic background. The good leader is a good leader with facts and evidence. Because I know mass is the foundation upon which every just society needs to be built up. As far as uh, Nigerians, Africans at large, deviates from this clear distinction from what is right, from what is wrong, we will always remain in darkness. Because the structure we have today is man-made. It's a man-made structure. And when Nigeria as a nation rises upon her feet and say, enough is enough, let us call a spade a spade. I assure you that that is when our nation will be prepared. That is when we'll go from, from, from this, uh, what we, we are always termed as the shit hole, to what we are meant to become. If the ancient Egypt was built, saw the biggest civilization ever witnessed in the history of humanity, even up to today, if they were able to arrive at this uh, incredible feat, is specifically, I repeat, it's specifically because they are practicing math or they were practicing math. And now, deviating from this uh, Mahatic uh, foundation, this is where we are. This is where we are. Now, we know that there is a clear difference between Mahat and Isfet. Uh, last uh, presentation, Tony portrays this, uh, this, uh, this very aspect, you know, talking about Mahat, talking about righteousness, talking about what is good from what is uh, unpure, Yama Yama. Uru uru, you know, anything that is not good is is fat. Ladies and gentlemen, the future is in our hands. And I believe, I believe that if we really want to take back our nation, if we really want to go back to, to not just to the glorious past, but to a better future, we actually need to, to start uh, calling a spade a spade today, now. Uh, unfortunately, there are so many people who are clamoring for sit at home. Those who don't want to put into, into practice their, their franchise, who want to disfranchise themselves. It's a moral evil. It is evil for you not to voice out, for you not to choose your own leaders. It is a deviation from your, your true calling. I, I hope this word uh, goes far and beyond, especially to the youth of today. Those who fall prey to what the politicians are already planning in two weeks' time to buy your votes. I hope you wake up. I hope you realize the power that lies in this clear distinction from what is good, from what is evil. Once again, remember your Sankofa. Let us learn from our past. Let us look at our past critically. Let us ask ourselves this question. Why are we where we are today? Is it the case of uh, uh, Annie that was telling the son that humans can be taught? And the son is refusing, saying, no, uh, you know, I am different from you. If I were born during your own time, a lot of people make this analysis in Nigeria of today. If we were born in the time of our forefathers, we would have been better. If, say, we did that time, that time we worked for better for us. And the dad is saying no. And he is saying no to us today. The time we are born in is the right time. This is the right time. It's never too late to rise. It is never too late to forge one's future. That is why Sankofa remains the basics for a, a wonderful uh, and a just society. Going back to your past is very fundamental. Using it to interpret your present life, your present reality, your political, social, religious, economic realities. Once you interpret these realities, then you go into action. That is the, the, the third step. Action that builds 
that tries to, to change reality. We all always uh, talked about man in becoming. We are always in becoming. We are called to become. We are called to become magic persons. And this brings us to the end of uh, today's uh, presentation lecture. So I await your, your questions. I decided to be very brief in today's presentation because it's uh, actually a conclusion of what we've already begun. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Remain tuned. Wow, uh, this is uh, as expected. This came as expected, uh, incisive uh, to the call and uh, uh, intentional also. <laughs> I will say that uh, thank you very much for this uh, uh, wonderful presentation. And uh, the floor is ours. The floor is ours now to ask questions. Let me be the first to ask. <laughs> I don't know this um, this um ignorance is uh, that when one does evil is as a result of ignorance. Uh, can you please uh, uh, buttress this point? Okay, yeah, you said something about know thyself. If you actually know yourself, if you a nurture this uh, knowledge and all that you should be able to uh, follow the matic way of doing things. But I would like you to buttress the point uh, well, I mean, go deeper a little bit on it. Yeah, that okay, for instance, if you do something wrong, it's because you're ignorant and not, uh, they don't look at it, the ancient Egyptians don't look at it as a sin. So, can you please? Uh, give us a little bit of understanding on that. Okay, uh, thank you very much. Now, when you uh, we make reference to ignorance, the Egy ancient Egyptians, uh, they were very critical persons and they believed so much in uh, what we call the, the use of the, uh, rationality, the use of the brain. Now, they believe that the, the right use of the brain necessarily necessarily brings one to, to doing what is right. That you cannot uh, claim to know what is good, know the, the, the right thing, and then you do the opposite. Actually, <laughs> let me land. The ancient Egyptians would be so surprised that Nigerians of today, they will see, what thing they do these people? I mean, they know they see now. That is because for them, it's very essential to observe when you see your reality, the next step is to start reflecting on the things that you see because you ask yourself, why are things the way they are? And why, how should things be? The way things are, why they are the way they are, and how they should be. Now, if someone actually makes use of the intelligence, rationality, his gift, because we'll say that he is actually like God, is God. If you make use of it, then naturally you should arrive you know, at doing what is right. Now, when they see someone actually who is not doing the right thing, for them it's it, from the fact that actually, ah, you know, no, I know, no, say, no, be like this. Because they can't believe that <laughs> you, you, you are not doing the right thing despite knowing the right thing. Take, for instance, uh, when you see our presidential candidates, let's just go there because it's going to help us to understand this, this time. Someone wakes up in the morning, starts supporting someone he knows that uh, apparently, clearly, from all indications, that uh, he needs others even to, to walk, that he's not coherent. And then he bases it on the fact that uh, uh, he, he, he don't he build Lagos, so he don't do many things, so he don't do. And that becomes the basis upon which he wants to uh, select uh, or advocate for such a leader. The ancient Egyptians will look at that person and say, ah, this person, they're ignorant. So he no not know the implication. He no not know the implication of the thing where they do. Because if you know, the impact of such a choice for the next couple of years, you will never do that. You're ignorant. You know, that's a clear fact. 
So without uh, <laughs> uh, going further than this, you can see that uh, ignorance is, is, is as a result of lack of either the consequences of what one is doing, or one doesn't have all the knowledge, all the information, so let's put it this way, in order to make a good decision. The ancient uh, Egyptians believe that once you are given all the facts, once you are given everything and you are standing on the same uh, uh, standpoint or point of view with others, naturally you, you will be seeing the same thing, you know, and then you, you, you should act uh, accordingly because it's your calling, it's who you are. The, use your brain, use your rationality and you will arrive at this. Though, now we know that in uh, current, uh, let's say, development of science and technology, that there are persons actually that are inhibited, probably from nature, you know, and uh, they actually, they don't know uh, things because by their own nature, they are limited, you know, because we know that our intellectual uh, capabilities are different, persons are different. So there are certain areas where one actually doesn't know. But if he happens to the teaching of uh, the ancients or what has been shared so far, uh, de definitely you should arrive at uh, making a good uh, choice. Now, let me read what uh, the professor uh, Maomio Don Venance Susan, has written. He said, according to Altep, the ignorant one is one who don't want to learn. You see, I'm... Despite all the things that have been said, despite everything, you know, he has, that has been given all the information of an inno only, and one who doesn't want to know himself. Man, know thyself. He doesn't. It's a choice. You know, like I said before, probably out of negligence, out of forgetfulness, but there is actually that conscious uh, choice. He has decided not to know. So it is a moral failure. You have failed morally because you have refused to learn. But I don't get that. <laughs> <laughs> so can, can, can we say in essence that uh, the action of the ignorant person would be perpetuating evil? Yes, this is the right time. And because it's a moral failure. He has failed uh, morally. And because of his act, uh, there is evil. It is fed and not my act. There is chaos, you know, because he has chosen not to be magic. He has chosen not to do what is right. By extension, he creates evil in this society. So it's a moral responsibility actually to, to, to do what is right. Thank you. So the floor is still open. If there are other questions or contributions, the floor is still open. We have uh, eight minutes more to do this that we close for the day. Okay. <clears throat> Good evening, everyone. Good evening, uh, Mr. Nikki JP. Um, my question is thus, can you hear me? Okay, so um, my question is actually um, two-pronged. Uh, while you were lecturing, you made mention of man know thyself. Even when your response just now, you also made mention of man know thyself. And um, you also attributed that saying to the Kemites. And that um, it was lit it's later attributed to the to the Greeks. So, I in the first place I would like to you know understand the term as I'd like you to throw more light on the term man know thyself, and then secondly, in the second part I would like you to um, expatiate on the origin of it from the Kemites to the Greeks, you know, if you, if you will, if you may, <laughs> I'll appreciate. Thank okay. you so much. You're welcome. Uh, that's a, a, a concise uh, question, you know. The Egyptians, uh, their basic concern, 
Mm -hmm. But this is the the uh, uh, point of uh, uh, you know movements. The basic concern of the ancient Egyptians was how to build a just and human society. How we go take build our society may make sense. And they realized that in order to achieve this, uh, there is need for one to become conscious, you know, of one to become conscious of his reality, know his limits, know his powers, his potentials, harness these potentials and become that which is created to become, okay? Because if you, for instance, you are a fetru, no, ukusare, if, for instance, you are not, uh, you've not become fully yourself, there is all, already a, a leak in the society because we are, we are all united. So they knew that if we know ourselves, if we actually know who we really are, that we are created like the gods, even in the classical, in the Hebrews also, they, they use this expression. And mind you, the ancient Egyptians, we are there before the, the, the Hebrews. When they say that uh, they, they, you, you one uh, needs to, to know himself, not just uh, you know memorizing things, but also for you to, uh, how, how do I put it? Put into, into action what you are, because you are created in the image of God. This is a realization that many, uh, especially Christians came to many years later. I'm talking of thousands of years later that we actually created in the image of God. And that's why the Bible in the Genesis uh, narrates the story, the history of uh, how man came to be, which is not original to the Hebrews, actually. We know that they borrowed it from the, 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 the culture around, and Egypt actually was the place we all used to go to learn about this. So Egypt, as the mother of all civilization, had this knowledge inscribed it on all the temples because the temples were places where people go to meditate, contemplate, get in touch with their hand, with their, with their inner self, and also with the transcendent being, the being that is uh, above them. Now, from this experience, because they know that once they enter in, you enter, you discover who you are, you come back to the society and you build a better society. The Greeks, fortunately, we are also tutored there by most of the, uh, by the, the, some of the priests in the ancient Egypt. After the lectures on that, they realized that this is actually the core of how to build a just and human society. When people uh, discover who they are, get in touch with their inner self and transform their society. So that was how the, the knowledge became diffused. And you know, actually, the beauty of this world is that there is shared knowledge. You know, something develops in one part of the world, and then before you know it, it goes to a, a different part because Egypt itself, being the mother of all civilizations, is actually where life began. You know. So if life began in this part of the world, it is by extension, think people took so many things, arts. Uh, knowledge, medicine, actually, uh, to other parts of the world. Uh, so that was how uh, everything uh, migrated. The information we have in the Greek temples. Now, and uh, mind you, remember that the Greeks were also writing it on their own temples. So it was a uh, copy and paste. Okay. They just copied and they pasted it. They never said that it, it belonged to them. They never said that they, they discovered it. It was the, the white supremacist. Uh, uh, movements to annihilate, wipe out knowledge that made them to ascribe it to themselves as the origin. Correct on it, Africa, uh, Sankofa. Tony, you want to say something? Yes, just want to make a little contribution to that. And in philosophy, when we studied philosophy, we came to understand that that uh, uh, statement was uh, owned or began by Socrates, that it is ascribed to Socrates as the one who uh, said, man know thyself, man know the self. And uh, with further readings, we've come to realize that even Socrates went to Egypt to get learned, to, to, be, to be tutored. And all the Pythagoras and many of, of them had to go to Egypt for them to be confirmed, if I may say, for them to be acknowledged, authenticated. As philosophers, they had to go to Egypt to be tutored by the 
uh, by the Egyptian uh, uh, mystery school uh, teachers. They had to go through the mystery school of the Egyptians. And that was a rare education that was given to not everybody, but a selected few. If you are not initiated, you do not, uh, you don't get that information. You don't get that in, uh, knowledge. So these people had to leave where they were and went to Egypt to get this information. So studies is everywhere. Uh, this information is everywhere. And uh, it is well known, it's rampant now, this knowledge that uh, uh, the word man knows itself was actually found not just in the temples alone, but every door. So because the people, because if you are guided by math, the cross that you have in your church, you bring it to your house because you want it to guide you as a Christian. You don't just leave the cross in the church. Everybody has, every Christian almost has a cross in their house, in their houses and things like that. So the same way. So it's, it was that the word, man know thyself, was found even in each doors of every home. That is how it was said of the Egyptian. So um, the Greeks came and actually they, they took it also, which is not a bad thing, but appropriating it to themselves and saying, okay, that is the origin. That is, that's also what they did. I mean, in terms of trying to uh, erase the notion or erase the historical fact that uh, civilization began in Africa. Uh, that also they took, that if these people are considered uh, uh, lower human beings to themselves, how can they have built such a civilization? So they did all they had to do to, to bring that down, to erase, to destroy historical facts so that they can uh, remain on top and all of that. So thank God that since knowledge is knowledge, <laughs> You cannot kind of hide it. You cannot kill it. It will always raise itself up. So we know about that today. And we are using it as people of African descent, using it to know who we are and knowing that our forefathers believed in that and they did great things, wonderful things. And we are saying we too can do the same if we have that, same, that kind of mindset. We too can do the same. We can even do more. And that is what he's saying. That's what the lecturer is saying today, that you know and you make the right choice. What are you doing? You are creating isfat, isfat, disorder, chaos. And what are we receiving today in Nigeria? Chaos, because we have decided, though we knew, but we've decided to choose wrongly, to act wrongly. And that is isfat. So thank you. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. You're welcome. So thank you. Thank you very much uh, once again. Uh, uh, lecturer for today, uh, Dr. <laughs> so Dr. Anneke J. Pichin also. He's not a doctor, but I'm giving him a doctor this night, uh, giving him the, the attribute of a doctor. So thank you very much for the, for the presentation. And uh, we look forward for, a, for another one. The next time we'll be meeting again. Uh, Chino, so we carry on uh, in the next uh, lesson, which is going to be the free will. The free will. You see, the ancient Egyptians, the sometimes i don't sometimes it becomes uh it's as if you are you keep repeating you keep repeating you keep repeating so you, sometimes it gets tiring to be saying these things they already knew these things it's, it, they already knew so they're in their matic anthropology they talked about they are talking now about the free will and i believe uh chin and so and AK is going to dissect it for us in a wonderful way uh by the time we meet again so for all of us who are here today, thank you for your patience. We are all learning and uh, I believe you all are getting, taking this information 
into yourself gradually. And we hope that this information will not just be gotten, but will be put into practice. We put into practice. And that is where, as, what, as our professor has written on the chat, that knowledge is not just scientific practice. It is also a moral duty. It's not just that I just know. So I do my thing, I know the practice, you know, I know the I know the work and all of that. No, it's not just that. You can know, but it's also a moral duty, understanding that you are not alone. You are not alone. There are other people around. There's a moral duty you have towards the other person and all of that. And when we all put all these ideas and this understanding together, uh, why we will not have a just society. We must surely. So this is what we are doing. Each one of us trying to take in this knowledge and make it something that is part of us that would enable us to relate with one another and also to create what? A just society. So good night, everyone. Good night. Thanks for listening.